Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. MP Mark Strahl endorsing a conservative leadership pick. A guilty plea from a 2019 homicide in downtown Chilliwack. Imagine High prepping for year number two. And the BC Boys High School Basketball Championships have a couple of Chilliwack schools in the mix. Josh Bohr will have sports later on in the show. Our special guests this week include Brooke Huller and Janet Carroll from Imagine High. Broadcaster and shortwave enthusiast Bruce Claggett. Bruce Renwick with the Chilliwack Curling Club during the sportscast. Matt Paisley is back with your Chilliwack real estate update in The Welcome Matt. And Paula DeWitt with a brand new entertainment spotlight segment called Seen Here First. So it's a big show today. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. Our top story. We have an update on Rosedale and A.J. Rundle student Ethan Fleming. There was a walk to show support for Ethan as the 16-year-old is now in his third battle with AML leukemia. Now, Ethan has had bed sores as well as a bacterial infection. That means he's had to have more antibiotics, more chemo, more blood work done. There's now a pick in his arm. There is a family Facebook page set up so you could follow his progress. It's called Ethan's World. This week, the Chilliwack School Board reviewed its advertising policy, and while advertising may help with purchases and promotions, there is a fine line that, according to the board, should not be crossed. From the policy, it reads, and this is up on their uh, webpage, relationships between the board at school and commercial enterprises can enhance learning opportunities when aligned with the district's core values. The sale, the promotion of sale, or the support of sales by canvassing, advertising, or by other means, on the part of any commercial enterprise should be seen as a violation of the safe and secure environment for students. Therefore, there should be no actual or implied obligation to purchase any product or service. There will be no use of corporate logos and slogans or any physical signage within the district. Now, to recognize sponsorships, temporary print and or electronic media logos may be appended to district material. I know it's a mouthful. Still with schools. Imagine High is about to wrap up their first year in existence and now recruiting for next fall. The principal, Brooke Holler, and program director Janet Carroll joining Chill TV for an interview to review year one and look ahead to the fall. Chill TV's News of the Week, and we go to Imagine High with uh, the principal, Brooke Holler, program director, Janet Carroll. Stacey Parsons is uh, waving in the background. Uh, first off, ladies, you got through, almost got through year number one now, and no major, outside of COVID, obviously, but no major glitches in this first year. You guys must be feeling very, very proud of what you've accomplished so far this year. Yes, we are so excited and, uh, as the kids would say, stoked for everything that we've been doing. It hasn't been without its challenges, but I think it's gone better than we actually expected. Now, we've only had, what, grade nines this year? Is that it? Nine and ten. Nine and ten. So now we're starting to recruit for next year. Are we going to be able to do 11 and 12s, or is this still in one-year increments? I'll let Brooke talk to that. One year increments. So next year we'll have 9, 10, 11, and then those grade 11s will become our first graduating class when they get to grade 12. Now, one thing, when we've talked about this before, because uh, there are some people that have this misconception, it's all art and uh, no, quote, work, but you still have to do what? English, math? <laughs> what, what do we have to do outside of, I'm going to go to the studio and have some fun and learn? We, we yeah do that too so we will have fun in the studio but it's the same curriculum that you would receive in a different school we follow the bc curriculum so we still do the math and the english and the socials and the sciences we just have a different approach to how we structure that so it's an integrated way of learning same concepts same competencies just a different delivery now uh do we have to fill out a, a send a, a cv a resume what do we do to apply for the fall we don't have an audition or an interview process we just have a zoom connection so what our biggest joy is is we get to meet every single one of our learners before they come we book a zoom meeting with every family we just get to hear about them and their hopes and dreams and the amazing things that the kids do answer any of their questions and if the folks think it's a good fit we welcome them kindly to imagine so we don't have a criteria for a certain kind of kid we want just folks who think a little bit outside the box are up for some integrated learning and uh, creative souls. 
So for more information, go to uh, all the social media that Imagine High has. Perfect, or imagine.sd33.bc.ca. And one more time, imagine. Uh, imagine.sd33.bc.ca. Brooke Holler, Janet Carroll, Stacey Parsons, Imagine High, uh, a big thank you for this. Uh, and uh, you're going to get a lot of people asking. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Thanks Don. Don. And you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. The chess pieces are moving within the federal Conservative Party as to who will succeed the ousted leader Erin O'Toole. On Monday, Chilliwack Hope MP Mark Stroll, who is also the Conservative Party whip, posted his support for Pierre Polyver. Polyver supported the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa, but he denounced the violence. He is pro-choice, and he wants to scrap the federal carbon tax. Candidates have until the end of April to announce their intentions. The final vote on a new leader is September the 10th. Owen Charpentier pleaded guilty to the second-degree murder of Keith Baldwin in the downtown Chilliwack area. This happened just over two years ago, and it was not far from the Ruth and Naomi's mission. The 25-year-old prolific offender was accused of shooting the 27-year-old Baldwin in the head in October 22nd of 2019. This was off Yale and Fletcher. Now, the Chilliwack Progress reporting that a six-day preliminary inquiry was held in B.C. Supreme Court last summer. This was in advance of the trial. Charpentier instead pleaded guilty to a second-degree murder charge. He did appear in court in Chilliwack on Monday via a video link to schedule a sentencing hearing. Now, there were maneuvers from Charpentier's lawyers over procedure. He and his two brothers are extremely well-known to police all the way from Chilliwack to Surrey, each with many convictions. There are reports that both Owen and his brother Andrew are drug dealers connected to the Red Scorpions gang. Art is always subjective and it may not suit everyone's taste. The Five Corners birds on top of the clock tower literally went unnoticed by locals until a Chill TV reporter pointed them out to passers-by and a couple of local merchants. The cost of the metal rainbow birds was $12,000, but they are on top of the clock, uh, so you do have to look for them. Horticultural extraordinaire, horticulturalist extraordinaire Brian Minter was one of 31 people who this year was invested into the Order of BC. This comes a few years after Minter was actually given the Order of Canada. Michael Buble and Dr. Bonnie Henry were also among this year's inductees. Yarrow Days is a go. Sheila Lum in charge of the project and the 2022 Yarrow Days Facebook page is now active. At a recent organizational meeting, last year's theme of celebrating 50 years of Yarrow Days, a 70s vibe of feeling groovy, was approved. Last year's festival didn't happen. Exact dates for this year, well, that's going to be coming in the next few weeks. The Ron James comedy tour that was supposed to be in Chilliwack last November, well, the full throttle tour is now rescheduled for Friday, June the 17th at the Chilliwack Cultural Center. So the tickets will go on sale next Friday, March the 18th. And if you want a real slice of Canadiana humor, you got to go see Ron James. The 2022 Pedia, Petey's Extravaganza at Fantasy Farms have locked in their dates April 14th to the 18th. Gary Moran at Fantasy Farms is looking for staff to work the show on the farm. And yes, that train through the farm will be running. The Facebook page is now updated and more info can be found also on the Fantasy Farms website. There will always be arguments pro and con about time changes. Yes, should we stay on daylight saving time or keep status quo? Well, that argument is for another day. The bottom line is this weekend, we go to daylight saving time. Clocks go ahead one hour Saturday night or Sunday morning. Take your pick. But sunset will be after 7 p.m. starting Sunday. With the Ukrainian conflict, the BBC have resumed shortwave service to Russia and Ukraine. Russia has been using shortwave to send instructions to troops. And there are reports that Ukraine has been jamming those signals with the Ukrainian national anthem. Former Fraser Valley and Vancouver broadcaster Bruce Claggett, who's now with Switchboard PR, is an avid fan of shortwave. He talks to DXers all over the world. Shortwave is not dead yet. And Chill TV spoke with Claggett about the technology. And then right after that interview, the welcome mat with Matt Paisley, followed by Sports and Josh Bohr.
Chill TV's News of the Week continues with uh, Bruce Claggett, Vancouver broadcaster, well known from his days in Abbotsford with the old CFER and then Radio Max uh, with Switchboard PR, but he is also a shortwave buff, you can tell by the equipment. And the reason we've got Bruce here is the story that is coming out of Ukraine and Russia. Bruce, you probably have some better detail than, than I do, but I understand that the Russians were actually using shortwave to send information to their troops and the Ukrainians were blocking them using shortwave? Is that it? Well, that's uh, true. But also we have to remember, Russia has a long history of using shortwave radio. And Don, it was only until about uh, 2014 that they switched away from it. Uh, some of us in the past may have remembered uh, Radio Moscow, uh, which was a entity up until the 1980s. And then it morphed into another entity and then Radio Sputnik, and then it went all digital. So they have been pretty good at this, along with other countries, including our own, even Canada. And, uh, and now we're into counter messaging using shortwave radio. And that's kind of what the BBC did earlier this week. Okay, and uh, as you can tell, Bruce is slightly into shortwave by the equipment behind him. Uh, CBC, I know, in, in Vancouver had a shortwave station. Our old radio station, News 1130 CKWX, had one. Is there one still? I believe there was one with, I think, 600,000 watts or something uh, in Newfoundland that was pointed towards Europe. Is that still operational? Well, here's the interesting thing. Uh, shortwave, for the most part, has uh, almost gone silent in recent years, except for some Christian programming and a few countries that still rely upon it. Uh, I think of uh, Cuba, uh, which has had Radio Havana for years. Um, and Cuba still does uh, very much use it. And uh, of course, the Russians have access uh, to different transmitter sites around the world from their friends and can always go into a place like Cuba and uh, still uh, access their programming. They're not allowed to set up any station in the United States to do mm. it. So any shortwave uh, radio programs that they uh, come out with now have to be from a friendly nation or from Russia itself, which is uh, uh, more than doable on shortwave. They're still able to pick up programming from around the world, just hasn't been used much. And now there's an opportunity with uh, your traditional uh, owned media or uh, channels and platforms going down or being controlled by government. Shortwave is free. It's able uh, to access uh, uh, without any censorship. And that's what people are turning to. Have you, because uh, you've got the gear, have you been able to talk to yeah. anybody or at least monitor U Ukraine and Russia? Well, of course, I'm a ham radio operator too. And there's a connection between shortwave radio and ham radio. Uh, we're using the same frequencies and uh, we all uh, pay attention. Uh, it is the talk of the town right now. Ham radio operators like myself are tuning into the BBC to hear their shortwave broadcast, which was reintroduced. And uh, everybody wants to get a hold of it. Conditions are not great. And of course, we look to atmospheric conditions to make sure that we can receive those signals. That's the downside. Yes, it's always available in theory, but you're still relying upon things like the ionosphere to bounce your signal. And that hasn't been great of late. Myself, I haven't heard it. I've heard from others who have here in Canada, here in BC, and uh, they're impressed with uh, some of the BBC broadcasting. We, uh, we're definitely going to revisit this uh, uh, down the road. Bruce, again, a big thank you. Bruce Claggett of uh, Switchboard PR, as well as you're going to be back on CKNW soon, we hope. Thanks again for joining us, and you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Snowdrops, daffodils, and crocuses are starting to poke up in gardens across Chilliwack. Rain and sunshine have replaced snow and fog, and your nosy neighbor is beginning to ask when you're going to clean up your garage. These are all signs that the spring real estate market is just around the corner. Before we get to the spring market and what we can expect, let's have a look at what's been happening in Chilliwack for the past month in real estate. Prices continued to climb across the board. Last month, the average price of a single family home in Chilliwack was $1,118,000. Townhouses average $763,000. Apartments, $434,000. And mobile homes, $352,000. 
While prices are always fun to discuss, the more interesting numbers to look at are the new listings compared to the total sales. Total sales for February were 420, down from 533 in February of 2021. However, the number of new listings increased year over year from 617 in February of 2021 to 700 last month. To put it simply, compared to last year, at the same time, sales are down 26%, while the number of new listings is up 13%. Is the market starting to balance? While the numbers are encouraging, a trend this does not make. In other news, this past month, the Bank of Canada did what everyone expected and raised interest rates by a quarter point. And there are already rumblings that we could be in line for another two to three more increases later this year. Will that be enough to slow down inflation and in turn stabilize house prices? Probably not immediately, as there is still a supply and demand issue in the local market. But a combination of increased new listings with the increase in rates might be enough to at least slow the price growth down. The one number I'll be keeping my eye on as we enter the spring market is the average days on market. In February 2021, the average days on market for a listing was 18. Last month, it was only eight. Although we are seeing increased listings, this average number of days still tells us that there is a supply issue. Locally, we are still seeing high interest in the downtown Chilliwack area for sales of developmental properties. But this past month, we started to see more resales in Sardis and Promontory. Many people weary of attempting a move during the past two COVID years are perhaps feeling a little more comfortable with listing and either upsizing or downsizing. The highest concentration of listings on the south side of the highway continues to be in the G.W. Graham School catchment area. While on the north side of town, the area east of Young Road and west of Prest Road has the highest number of listings. So buckle up, Chilliwack, as I think this year's spring market is going to be an interesting ride. As always, if you or someone you know is looking to buy or sell, send me an email call me or text, and I'll be happy to help. I am never too busy for your referrals. Thanks, Chilliwack, and bye for now. Welcome back to sports, everyone. My name is Josh, and we've got another interview lined up today. We're with Bruce Renwick from the Chilliwack Curling Club and Community Center. He's the general manager over there. Bruce, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot for having me, Josh. Really appreciate you. So, me up. sorry. So you have had, I imagine, a rough last couple of years at the club. You know, you have all this momentum. You opened the build in November of 2018. You you've got this gorgeous facility. You hosted, if I, my notes are correct, you're the 2019 Men's and Ladies Senior Championship for Canada. That was a Canada-wide event, and then the pandemic happened. I can imagine that was a very difficult season for you in the club. It was, yes. But now we're moving out of the pandemic. And you were just telling me beforehand that there's a ton of opportunities and exciting things happening in kind of the next 10 to 12 months, including an event coming up just this month, right? You're right, Josh. Uh, March 15th to the 20th, we're hosting the BC Senior Men's and Ladies Championships uh, with some very big names coming. Okay, would I know any of these names, potentially? You sure would. You're going to be able to see Brent Pierce, uh, the reigning BC Men's Champion. He'll be at the Briar this week, starting uh, Saturday, Friday afternoon. Um, Marianne Arsenault that you played for years with Colleen Jones out of Nova Scotia, uh, the current uh, BC Ladies Champion and the BC Seniors Champion having uh, finished second in Canada last year at the Nationals. That's unbelievable. It's funny, you hear all those names and you're like, man, you know, you're watching curling growing up on TSN. Those are people that I remember hearing about and watching at Scotty's and things like that, right? Um, can people come out to this event? Like, if I wanted to come join, is that a thing? You sure can. We, uh, we welcome all spectators. Uh, the building will be open, uh, free admission. Uh, it draws are 8, 12, 4, and 8 for the, for the six days, and oh. it will be some great, great curling. That sounds unbelievable, and a great way to get back in that gorgeous new building you guys have over there. That, again, is March 15th to the 20th of this month. Now, 
British Columbians have no shortage of ways to spend their winter. There's all kinds of winter activities you can do. But curling is a unique one that I think a lot of people don't think of right off the bat. And yet everyone I've ever talked to absolutely loves it if they, do, if they try it. So what opportunities do you have for new curlers and you know, people who are looking to try it? Um, we have we have all kinds of programs, Josh. It's a, it's a, it's a great game. It's something you can do your whole life. Mm. Uh, we have kids as young as eight years old in our little program, Little Rockers program. We have uh, ten ninety plus year olds, including a gentleman that's ninety five years old that curls three times a week. So it's truly a sport you can do your whole life. It's more about the social than the game. Mm. Um, it's a very welcoming atmosphere. Curlers are lots of fun to be around, and once we get them on the ice, people love it. Okay, so if I were to try it, and trust me, I have plenty of friends trying to convince me, are there programs for new curlers um, to get them kind of into it, teach them the basics? There are, Josh. We kick our, off our season at the end of August with a, uh, with a summer bond spiel, and then we full, hold a full week of camps. We have kids in the morning from 10 to 11, we have seniors in the afternoon, and we have adults in the evening for Monday to Friday, so you'd be very, very comfortable. We also have a program that's called our Six Weeks for 60 Bucks. Extremely successful for us. We're getting new curlers into the club, and uh, people feel very, very comfortable joining into a league after that program. I just want to go back for a minute. You said the word bonspiel. What is a bonspiel? That's just a fun sounding word. <laughs> bonspiel is a, a curling term for tournament, and uh, um, it is a fun word, and I think we're the only sport that uses that, ter that that's, terminology. That's awesome. Yeah. If I were you guys, I would use that every Every event would be a bond spiel. Just spam that word everywhere. Well, Bruce, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. If you want to get involved with the Chillout Curling Club, like I said, they have a gorgeous facility and amazing people. You talk to anyone who's been over there, they say nothing but good things. So head to the Chilliwack Curling Club website, sign up for some of those fall leagues, sign up for some of those new opportunities for uh, people who are maybe new to curling, and uh, Bruce, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Josh. I really appreciate you having me out. We'll have you back at some point, and we will see you back after the break with the rest of sports. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, did I get a haircut between takes? Absolutely not. We filmed the interview a couple days ago. So thank you so much to Bruce for coming in. Let's jump into the rest of sports for today. We're going to continue to follow Cultus Lake Olympian Reese Howden, who is now in Montefon, Austria, for this week's Ski Cross World Cup event. He recently finished ninth at the Beijing Winter Olympics, if you remember, and won the World Cup in 2020. Now, there was some concern about whether this event would even be able to go ahead as planned, given that two weeks ago he was set to compete in the Sun Valley event in Russia, but the international ski body and Alpine Canada brought the team home after the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. So it's good to see Reese out there competing again. We wish you all the best of luck, and we'll update you on his results next week. Jake Vertanen has been released by his KHL team, Spartak Moscow. The Absurd native and former Vank for Canuck is currently on trial for a sexual assault charge stemming from an alleged incident that took place in September 2017. Spartak Moscow claimed there was a breach of contract, and the province newspaper is reporting that his release is likely a result of him leaving Russia due to the Ukrainian conflict. Vertanen traveled back to Vancouver earlier this week for an appearance in front of the BC Supreme Court on Wednesday. The Chilliwack Jets ended their first real full season, disappointingly, unfortunately, ending with a four-game sweep at the hands of the Ridge Meadow Flames. Honestly, the games weren't even close. They were kind of crushed, but if there's a silver lining, Jets forward Caleb Garrett completed his final year of junior hockey eligibility in style with 40 goals and 42 assists and capped it off by being named League MVP. So congrats to Caleb. The best is yet to come for those Chilliwack Jets boys. I'm believing for that. All right, let's run through a few of the exciting sporting events that are coming up here in the Fraser Valley over the next couple of days and weeks. First up, the BC High School Basketball Championships are this week at the Langley Event Center, and there are two Chilliwack schools in the mix, Unity Christian and GW Graham. Yesterday, in single A, Unity beat Brooks West Shore 85-45, they just crushed them, while in triple A, GW Graham narrowly lost to Princess Margaret 63-60, so close. You can follow along with the rest of the results throughout the weekend at bchighschoolbasketballchampionships.com. Planning is now underway for the Harrison Dragon Boat Festival on, on Harrison Lake, and the date has been set for July the 23rd. This festival is run by the Fraser Valley Paddling Club, and for more information, or if you want to get a team involved, head to their website at harrisondragboat.com. 
The Chehalis Youth Soccer Tournament is coming up April 30th to May the 1st. Registration ends April the 26th, and the divisions range all the way from the kiddies, five-year-olds, all the way to under-21s. So if you want to get involved, you got a team, or you want to join a team, head to their Facebook page. They have all the information there. Finally, the Chilliwack Giants have a bunch of events coming up before their season starts. First up, the Flag Coaches Clinic is this Friday, March 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Townsend Park, followed by the Spring Flag Combine, also at Townsend Park, on March 15th and 17th. As always, you can check out the Giant social media for all of the contact info. After the break, our new entertainment spotlight featuring Paula DeWitt, conductor of the Chilliwack Symphony Orchestra, called Scene Here First. Enjoy. Welcome to Scene Here First. My name is Paula DeWitt and I'm your host. And we are going to talk to two very special guests today. With me, I have Bevan Van Limt in the studio and I have Sylvia Karvalska on a call. Bevan has been with Bella Voce for, since the inception and Sylvia Karvalska has been with um, Bella Voce since the summer of 2019. And today we're going to talk about Bella Voce and our next concert, which will be in March. And this concert is about Lenten and reflections of Lenten feelings. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk to Bevan first and we're going to ask him to speak to that. Sure. Uh, so as uh, Paula said, the concert is uh, Lenten reflections. And I think a lot of us nowadays may not have so much of a deep relationship with the idea of Lent. We might have heard the word somewhere and, you know, had an idea that, okay, you give something up or something like this. But uh, traditionally, Lent is a period of sadness and dealing with sad feelings and dealing with hard things and taking account of yourself and the things that might be hard for others and you and this kind of thing. And uh, we thought it would be a beautiful idea to sort of connect with the voices of the past and present some music that, that helps people deal with these kinds of emotions and get some release. So our Lenten concert uh, typic yeah, is, is principally composed of music from both the Renaissance, uh, quite a long time ago, and the Baroque era, which immediately followed it. So we hope you come and join us and, and uh, deal with your emotions in a way that they've been dealt with for a very long time, which is through music and through sharing them uh, with others who feel the same way through music. Yes. Sylvia, can you speak a little bit about the music that we've selected and, and what, what yes. do you like about it? Yes, it's very emotional. And um, since I don't like or am unable to speak speak about emotions i love that i have opportunity to, uh, to express them through music and that wonderful, is wonderful yes. and yep. and also with the group of people that i love and it's it's just great to be part of choral community yes i agree what do you think about that bevan being part of a choral community and being able to express through music oh absolutely uh the choral community is is been an indispensable part of my life. Um, the people that I meet there have been some of the most amazing people that I've, I've had the privilege of being around. And they're all very interesting. Uh, artists are all very emotive and sometimes too much so, but uh, I love it either way. It's, it's just so much fun. And you've been with us since the beginning of Bella Voce and we have, we have evolved quite a bit in our style of music, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, we've been through genres of jazz, pops, classical, every kind of thing. Uh, and recently we've been spending quite a lot of time in these earlier eras to make ourselves uh, as robust of musicians as we can manage. And it's been difficult during COVID, but we have seemed to find a way to still be able to sing together. And Silvio has been a big part of that. We, we had lots of opportunities to sing at the cathedral with a small group. That was quite wonderful. Wouldn't you agree, Sylvia? I think that's when we really started oh, yes. to to bond and build our own little community within Bella Voce and develop yes. a sound, I find. Yes, that is wonderful. The uh, Holy Rosary Cathedral is a wonderful venue um, yes. for us to sing. And Which is, I've been so grateful for that. And one of our concerts will be at the Holy Rosary Cathedral on 17th of March. And the acoustics there are amazing. Which is really nice about this whole series is that all three concerts will be held in beautiful churches with amazing acoustics. So the 17th of March will be at the Holy Rosary and then the 18th of March will be at your church, Sylvia, which yes. is the um, Our Lady of Assumption. Our Lady of the Assumption in Port Coquitlam. Yes, a beautiful, beautiful church. And then our last one is in St. James 
in Abbotsford. And Father Ashley has been amazing for us. So we, we love all these churches and we love being able to, to perform together for the Lent concert. And now let's just have a little listen of some of the music that you're going to be hearing in March. I'd like to thank my special guests, Bevan Van Limt and Sylvia Karwowska, for coming to the show today. Please come back, because we have more special guests and lots of interesting interviews coming up. And now, back to Dawn. Thanks, Paula, and congratulations on your first episode of Seen Here First. And you'll be seeing a lot more of Paula with in-depth interviews and the people that create live entertainment in our city. Chill TV weather, it's a rainy spring weekend in the high of nine. And remember, we put the clocks ahead by one hour for daylight saving time starting Sunday. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, you can always send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.